When I was a little dweeb, my favorite thing was my Game Boy, and my second favorite thing was my pet turtle named Donatello, and my third favorite thing was my old DOS 286 PC with Hercules graphics and an amber monitor, and my fourth favorite thing w was mashed potatoes. And little dweeb dreamed of someday, in, in some magical future timeline, of combining his first and third favorite things into some sort of portable DOS Game Boy thing. A Game Boy, but for DOS games. He also dreamed of combining his second and fourth favorite things and, well, let's just say dreams really do come true. What? You thought I was going to mash up my pet turtle? What's wrong with you? But like a portable DOS computer. I wanted that so bad. Not a laptop, a handheld. These days we have a thousand devices that can play DOS games. Almost every freaking retro handheld out there can do DOS games. I made a video about playing DOS games on your handheld, so go watch that if you want to play DOS games on your flip zizzle or your retroid whatever majig. Totally great way to play DOS games, but part of me felt unsatisfied with that as a solution. Not just because playing DOS games on a tiny screen can be fun but isn't ideal for lots of games, but also because I want the device to feel DOSy. I want to be able to tinker around in DOS if I want to, to launch my games the old school DOS way. I just really need my dream of a portable DOS computer to come true in handheld form. Is that so much to ask? No, no it's not because the Steam Deck can do that and it's ac actually pretty great. The world of DOS games is a vast and varied landscape of retro goodness. The games that came out on DOS weren't bound to console hardware, so that is where the best innovation was happening, and the games had the best graphics, and the icing on the spaghetti is that there were a freaking ton of DOS games. There were more DOS games out than you could ever play in a lifetime. And playing them on your favorite handheld gaming device, the Steam Deck, is such a great way to experience these amazing classic games in the best way. There are lots of different ways you can play DOS games on the Steam Deck. I'm going to show you three methods today. The first is the easy and lazy way, which is using the Heroic Launcher to add your GOG account and run them that way. The less easy and less lazy but better way is to run them in RetroArch, using RetroDeck as your front end. And the hardest way, which is still pretty easy, and the way that is the most authentic, is we're going to turn the Steam Deck into an actual DOS computer with Dweeb DOS, Linux edition which I'm happy to share is ready for you to enjoy now. This really is my favorite way to play DOS games. It's this method that is the reason I made this video because I love it so much and it's, it's so authentic, but maybe the other methods will be easier and better for you. So we're gonna go over everything. But before all that, there is a method that doesn't need any extra steps. You don't even need to watch this video. And that is to buy the games on Steam. Yep, that's right. There are tons of old DOS games that you can get on Steam. Very often, it's the same version of the game that's on GOG. And you can just buy them through Steam and install them in Steam and play them in Steam. So if you want to play... <laughs> You can play the Steam version and not have to deal with any extra confusing steps getting it up and running. Isn't that right, Doom Guy? That's right, Tech Dweeb. I'm always ready to go. Just ask your mom. What? The first technique that we'll cover is using Heroic Launcher and getting the games through GOG. If you're not familiar with GOG, that's the good old games website. And it, it's sort of like Steam, but for older games. However, they also have lots of modern games there too. This is probably the easiest and best place to build a DOS game collection because they have the ultimate library of DOS games if you're buying them. You can get stuff on GOG that you can't find anywhere else. And because these games are super old, they're usually super cheap and they have sales all the freaking time. I bought Heroes of Might and Magic 2 last week for like $2.50. I love GOG from the bottom of my dweeby heart. The first step is to boot into desktop mode. If you don't have a GOG account, you can pull up a web browser to browse GOG and create an account and buy some games if you don't have any yet. When you're ready to play some of the games in your account, you'll need a piece of software called Heroic Launcher. You can get that through the Discover app. Just search for Heroic and select it and then click the install button in the top right. I already have this installed, but you'll see install up here. You can add your GOG account and you'll have to sign in and then once that's linked you'll see all of your GOG games in your library section over here. Let's install good old Heroes of Might and Magic 2. So uh, when you pick your game just install that right here from your library. And when that's done, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. You can launch it from Heroic and, and play it. 
it'll behave just as if you launched it from GOG or whatever. But let's get this game into Steam itself. To do that, you can click on the game to open its game page and then click the kebab menu at the top and select add to Steam to put this into your Steam library so that you can launch it from the game mode. You can also just add Heroic and skip adding individual games. Just use Heroic to launch them if you don't want to deal with adding each game to Steam individually. So now that we have our game added, let's go back to game mode. And now our new game is in our Steam library and you can launch it right there from the main Steam Deck UI and it'll start up. In this game, we need to use a keyboard to enter which option we want to start the game. So you can bring that up the same way as always on, on the Steam Deck with the Steam button and X and then type your option and the, the game will start up. Now you'll probably find uh, if you're playing this game that the controls don't work. That's because this game and all DOS games aren't console games. I mean, they're DOS games. And DOS games use keyboards and mouses, not controllers. However, one of the best things about doing this on the Steam Deck is that you can set any controls on your controller on the deck to be the, con the controls you want from the game. I suggest doing this out of game by pressing the controller button in the game settings, and then you can choose the appropriate controls for this game. In Heroes 2, you can pick a simple mouse mode like the touchscreen mouse, but, but th this is cool. If you go to community layouts and then press X to show all layouts, you'll see that someone has made a layout for Heroes 2. You can pick that and apply it and, and it'll have some nice simple commands bound to the keys and they have the right trackpad set up as a mouse. So that's handy. Just look to see if somebody's made something. But if you don't find a layout here, then you can make your own. And uh, why not share it with the community if you do? You can do that right here through the controller settings. Set the controls that make sense for your game and then use this share layout with community option to help out others. This method, using Heroic and adding games to Steam, it might seem complex and it is a bit just to get it going, but once you have it set up, adding new games is super quick. I think this is a great option if you have lots of games on GOG. And okay, that's one method down. If your brain feels a little melty, that's totally normal. Happens to me every time I install a thing with more than one button. Take a sec, maybe sip something fizzy. Give your Steam Deck an awkward little fist bump or whatever. And when you're ready, we can move on to the next method, which is using RetroArch. This is a bit more complex because it does require you to have your own games, either because you have backups of your DOS games or if you just uh found them on the internet somewhere. You can use RetroArch on its own. Go ahead and do that if you want to. But uh, the best way to use RetroArch is to use a front end like RetroDeck. RetroDeck is a package that you can install right from the Discover app it, that's like an entire retro emulation suite all set up for you. All you need to do is install it and add your games and that, that that's pretty much it. You can start playing your games right away. Lucky for you, I made a complete retro deck guide. So check that out. Link below if you need to know how to get, get that up and running. And here's the thing. Retro Deck can also do DOS games. All you need to do is add your DOS games to the Retro Deck games folder. You can drop in zip files or folders. Once you add your games, you can go to game mode and start up Retro Deck. Go to the DOS game section. If you scrape your game art, this section should look all nice and pretty. And you can pick a game and start it up. Uh oh, looks like we have an error. Apparently, it won't let us continue because you're not subscribed. Dang. I'm sorry to ask, but if you wouldn't mind doing that real quick so we can uh, continue. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. You'll be greeted by this DOSBox Pure start menu and you'll have a list of all the executable files from the game zip or directory. You can pick one and start it, but there's a neat little trick that a cool dweeb taught me. If you find the game exe file that you want to use every time, you can press right on the D-pad to set this to auto launch. This way you'll be able to get right into this exe and you can use save states like this too. I would suggest if you have any installers or setup programs that you need to run, run those first, get the game working perfectly, and then you can set the game exe as the default. Any changes made to the game, including install and setup stuff, will be saved in a zip file in the game saves directory. So you can actually install and run games directly from the zip and not worry about managing anything yourself. I love this. Your biggest hurdle for some games will be the controls. Some games are automatically detected by RetroArch, and RetroArch knows the, the, the controls and it has them all set up for you. For example, Jazz Jackrabbit, a super popular game. So there's the predefined controls for that. You can just start playing that one right away. But some games don't have controls or the game just isn't detected properly in the, and RetroArch doesn't know what the game is. For example, Heroes of Might and Magic 2. 
that doesn't have the control set and you'll need to pick your own layout. It's easy to do. You can just open up the RetroArch quick menu and go down to controls and then pour one controls and ch change the device type to whatever makes sense for your game. The generic keyboard will probably work okay for most games. If your game has controls that you want to set yourself, you can select custom keyboard bindings and then you'll, you can pick which uh, button represents which key on a keyboard. But since this is a mouse game, I'm going to go with mouse with left analog, or you can set up your own Steam control controls if you set the right trackpad as a mouse and left click, yeah, you can use that instead. Or do both, that's what I do. Then you can test your controls and make sure everything works, and once you're sure that it works, one more step when you're done configuring the controls, make sure you go back to the controls menu and manage remap files and save the game remap file so that these controls will be remembered for this game every time you load it. Oh and by the way, if you ever need to press a single key in your game for some reason, like F1 to bring up saves or whatever. You can open up an on-screen keyboard at any time with L3 click. Obviously, you're not going to play the game like this, but it works for random keys every now and then. Or if you need to type something, it's good for that too. And that's, uh, that's kind of it. The game should more or less work. You may have to go into the core settings and tweak some CPU speeds or sound card stuff in very rare circumstances, but that's not common. The vast majority of games will, will just work. And not only do you get the convenience of just being able to dump your games into a folder and launch them from a front end like Retro Deck, but you also get all the other great RetroArch fun stuff like shaders and overlays. You can put a CRT shader on to make it look like your Steam Deck is running an old CRT monitor for extra retro vibes. You can fast forward and pause and also you get save states. Using RetroArch is the only way you get save states in your DOS games. This is my favorite way to play DOS games on the Steam Deck if I'm using it as a handheld. This next method is my personal favorite method. However, the one caveat with this is that it is not very handheld friendly. That's because this method transforms your Steam Deck into a DOS PC. And you can't use DOS with a controller. You use DOS with a keyboard and mouse. So this is only really useful if you're using this as a retro computer. It's kind of amazing when you do though. The way we achieve this is by running DOSBox. This is the advanced method. For, this is for like DOS nerds like me and maybe you. This is my own customized version of DOSBox staging called Dweeb DOS. This is a project that I've shown off before a few times. Check out this video if you want the grand tour and also uh, to learn how to actually use DOS and launch games using DOS commands. Dweeb DOS is just the latest open source version of DOSBox staging, but customized with a bunch of quality of life features added like DOS Navigator, a built-in text editor, which is useful for making batch files, and it's orange, as you can see. Definitely check out my grand tour video if you're interested in learning more. Dweeb DOS is one of my favorite things that I've done for my channel. And, and this is the reason I wanted to make this video because now I've done a Linux version and you can download this on your Steam Deck, extract the archive, put that folder wherever you want. And that that's that's it. It's, it's ready to go. In this folder, there's another folder called games, which is like the C drive. Anything you put in here will be on your C drive in DOS. So you're going to put game folders in here. You can't do stuff from zip files like this. I mean, it's DOS, really. Anything, all the all the constraints of DOS, you're going to experience here. You can run this DOSBox program right here and now, but I recommend right-clicking and adding it to Steam so that you can run it from game mode. Either way, when you run this, when it boots up, you're going to be greeted by this lovely Dweeb DOS logo and message. If you type readme, you'll see a list of all the customizations and even a quick DOS command cheat sheet if you need to know the basics of DOS stuff. You might also notice that there is a CRT shader applied and a custom orange command prompt. That's because Dweeb DOS is my DOS. It's set up the way that I like to use it. And I'm, I'm just sharing it with you so you can do things the way that I think is the funnest if you want to. But you, you can also edit the DOSBox staging conf file in the directory to turn off anything you don't like. So you use this like DOS. You can view your directories and change directories, load your games, but play your games. If you have disk images for your games, you can mount those the typical way that you mount disk images in DOS. You can create a batch file. There's info in the readme, but you really should watch my full Dweeb DOS tour video because I show you how to do all the more advanced stuff in there. You're going to want to have a keyboard and mouse set up, and if you do, you can use those right away. Feel free to try to find a way to use the controls and trackpad on the deck. You totally can, but if you're doing that, just do the retro deck thing instead. This is for turning your Steam Deck into a dusty old DOS PC that you use like a DOS PC. This is just is so cool to me. 
as a DOS lover that there's a sneaky DOS computer hiding in my Steam Deck. And literally, with the push of a button, it transforms my Steam Deck into a nostalgia machine. And congratulations, your Steam Deck is now a time portal. Not just back to the 90s, but specifically into the dim glow of a bedroom lit only by a CRT, where you just installed shareware Jazz Jackrabbit from a friend's floppy disk. If you're looking for some good DOS games to play, check out these two videos I made recently about the best DOS games. Thanks for watching, my fellow DOS dorks. Insert disk 2 to continue. I'm just kidding. There's no disk 2. But there is a like button. Just saying.